My mic is muted. I do apologize. Again, welcome to Let's Sip and Talk with Freema. Today we have on Tamar Slay. He's a former NBA player, overseas basketball player, and he's going to discuss with us his journey. You know, again, we do these interviews for motivation, knowledge, and, and, and inspiration. So people know they do have a chance. It is you know, a way I can get out there and do things or something that I really enjoy doing. So make sure if you are enjoying what Let's Sip and Talk with Freema is doing, make sure you guys hit the cash out and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel to see the behind the scenes footage of Miss Let's Sip and Talk. So let's see a little more about Tim Marsley. Più cinque per la centrale errore al tiro. Palla che arriva in velocità, Tamarsley che va a schiacciare! Che gran palla per il Federico Loschi! My name is Tamar Slay and I train with Accelerate Basketball. Going into my 12th season, you know, you start getting your doubters and saying he's too old, he can't play like he used to, so this year I'm looking to prove that I still can play at a high level. I played at Marshall University, graduated from there in 2002. Uh, I was drafted by the New Jersey Nets in the second round, played two seasons with them. One season with the Charlotte Bobcats. After that, I've been in Europe, Israel for a year, and I've been in Italy and played in five or six teams in Italy the last nine years. Coming from the America, going to Europe, it's a huge culture shock, but uh, after your first year or two, you adjust and you adapt to their culture, and it's, it's just like a second home now for me. It's more of a team game there. You know, in the NBA, you got two or three players that dominate the game, dominate the ball. In Europe, it's more five guys touching the ball, a lot of movement. The bigs are more of a shooters instead of guys that post up. I think I'll really have a European game because I'm a tall guy that can handle the ball, I can pass it, I can shoot it, and I kind of fit right in from the start from over there. So I didn't really have to adjust my game too much. I just continue to play my game and I fit right in. You know, before practice, I try to do some of the drills, the ball handling drills they taught me and some of the shooting drills just on my own. I don't want to give away their secrets too much because that's what makes them so great. But uh, I mean, it's, it's been awesome for me. It's the best training in the world. I mean, every day they come up with new drills, new challenges, and it's just, it always keeps you on your toes. You're always excited about the next workout because after you feel like you're getting better. And that's how I'm going to get to that high level from doing these workouts that we do every morning, twice a day. I'm prepared, I'm ready, and I'm excited about it. And that's all because of Celebrate. I mean, these guys, you can't come in here and not be ready to work because you work from the time you hit the floor until the time you leave. All right, all right. Hello, and thank you so much for coming on. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Appreciate I appreciate it. it. So I noticed one thing you said in the video that um, it was a culture shock to actually, you know, go over there to Europe. Like what type of um, difference is it from the actual states in being in Europe? Well, for me, you know, I come from a small town in Beckley, West Virginia. So uh, I never imagined and never even looked at, you know, what it was like living in a different country. So, you know, when you first land and you're in the airport and you're hearing, you know, everyone speaking a different language and, you know, people are just, you know, uh, <laughs> how do I put this? You know, like they invade your space a little bit more over there. Right. So like you're standing in line. <laughs> You may have a little guy standing beside you, and you're like, "Man, okay, is it an issue here or what?" But you know, that's just their uh, that culture, you know. Uh, so that, of course, you know, the food, you know, you you, you know, everybody, and I I respect the Italian uh, food mm -hmm. now. But when I first got over there, you know, I was used to the 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 American taste, you know, like what the pizza tasted like in the states, what the pasta was like. So everything was a huge adjustment, the cars, the traffic, uh, you know, shopping in the grocery store, uh, you know, even and then far as the basketball goes, you know, uh, the style of play was completely different from the NBA. So, you know, having all that thrown on it at you and basically an instant was, uh, you know, it was, it was shocking. And uh, I remember, oh, you guys. That's okay. We can still hear you. <laughs> Okay. We still can hear you. Know. You might even uh, turn the camera off. That's all. There we go. I'm back. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, it's okay. So, 
uh, I remember the first week when I was overseas, I was actually in Spain. Uh, I called my agent up and my wife and I said that I'm getting out of here. I said, you know, because it <laughs> really? was too much. For me. Yeah, yeah. And they were on the first, my agent was on the first plane out of uh, Washington, D.C. And uh, he would wait down in the lobby every morning to make sure that I was going to practice and I wasn't, uh, you know, running. <laughs> So he had to micromanage you, though. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did. He did. But um, I thank him, and I thank him for that now, you know, because I would have uh, probably missed out on, you know, building some fantastic relationship and being able to see the world. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't see that at the time. But, you know, now that I'm older and wise and I look back, you know, playing overseas for nine years was probably the best thing to happen to me. You know, wow. if I would have played in the NBA and stayed over here and not been able to experience the world, you know, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. Ooh, I appreciate all the time. Life experiences make us much wiser. You know, if we didn't have these life experiences, we wouldn't know, you know, where would we be right now? So I'm glad you touched on that. I want to touch on something really quickly. You mentioned about the traffic in the cars. Like, what's the difference when you say that? What? <laughs> well, the no, big, and, I mean, and I'll tell them this. I mean, all my Italian friends, if they're listening to this, like, it's just, it's like they drive with no rules at all. They do whatever oh. they want. They may bust, they may bust a U-turn. They may just pull out in front of you in traffic. You know, they may be, you know, you know, they talk with their hands. So, you know, they may be distracted doing all those things. So I, I remember uh, going to practice one day. Uh, I remember going to practice one day and, uh, you know, I was already talking back to my family back home. I was like, man, it's like a, I'm going through an obstacle course to get to practice. I, I'm almost in like seven car crashes. So I counted. It took me 10 minutes to get to practice. And it was probably seven different situations where it was just like, you know, I had to, you know, swerve or, you know, or, or say something to someone, you know, just getting to practice. So, you know, that was a that was an adjustment there that first couple of years wow. being overseas. Wow. Yeah. So how was the experience of actually – um, you know, decide, okay, I'm going to play overseas. Like, how was that experience or that transition? How did that happen for someone? Well, it happened like this. I was playing with the Charlotte Bobcats, which is now the Charlotte Hornets at the time. I had a two-year deal, and uh, mm -hmm. they had an option uh, on my contract, and I think it was like in July, and uh, I got the letter that said they wasn't going to pick up my option. I was coming off an injury. I broke my ankle. I missed the whole entire season. And, um, you know, Charlotte just decided that they didn't want to pick up my second year. So uh, the summer after that was kind of slow. I wasn't getting – I was getting some offers to go to training camp for, you know, a minimum amount of money. And uh, a team in Spain came with a, with a huge offer. And that was probably my first introduction to, okay, it may be a possibility to go overseas. And uh, – you know, my agent kind of explained to me, you know, what the European basketball leagues were like. But, you know, I was, I don't know, 25, 26 years old at the time, somewhere around there. And I was just like, you know, all right, how much are they paying me? <laughs> you know, uh, can I go over there for one year, dominate and get back into the NBA? And uh, that was the that was the goal. That was the mindset to go over to Europe for one year, rehab my ankle, make have make a, a you know, a, a good living, you know, with, with the mm -hmm. contract that I was giving uh, and then go back to playing the NBA. But uh Little did I know, uh, it's, it's much harder. Once you leave the NBA, you know, they forget about you. It's on to the next time yeah. you play. And uh, it was a tough journey trying to get back in. And I didn't get the offers again that I thought. And I was getting great offers in Europe. And I was like, you know what? This wasn't so bad. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of the rest is history. I ended up staying. You know, I had a few offers in the NBA throughout my nine years. But, you know, it was – it was more so that I was comfortable in Europe. Uh, the NBA wasn't guaranteed. Uh, mm -hmm. I had a family, my family and others to take care of. And uh, I couldn't risk, you know, missing out on the amount of money that, you know, I was being offered overseas to come back and take a chance to play in the NBA. Got you. And um, you mentioned, and of course, anything I ask, if you don't want to answer, I totally understand. Your ankle, how did that make you feel? You know, when you broke your ankle, like what did that do for you internally? Wow, wow, that's deep. That's deep because that I mean it. Uh, 
you know, since retired, and uh, I'll be open and honest, I've been, uh, you know, I just started with with therapy. You know, I've been trying to, you know, work through childhood trauma and uh, all different things that, you know, deaths in my family and poverty, all those different things I've been working through. You know, now that the basketball has stopped, and I've been able to kind of go deep into my thoughts, and uh, mm -hmm. that that's a big deal for me because how the injury happened was. Uh, you know, I was with the Nets and I twisted my ankle uh, as a rookie. Uh, this was two years before and me being prideful, me trying to make the team. I didn't tell uh, my trainers exactly how hurt I was and I continued to play through it. It wasn't broke yet. Right. But it was injured. And, uh, you know, my whole entire NBA career, I basically had a limp. I couldn't go for uh, 100 percent. You know, I couldn't train in the summers like I wanted to because I was trying to get this ankle to heal. And uh, it finally, you know, I was just warming up before a game and my ankle finally just snapped. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, that's when the doctors really could tell me exactly what was wrong. And, you know, I've talked to, you know, the, the New Jersey trainers. I talked to doctors and it was really just a bruise that never healed. You know, uh, right. this kept getting worse, and then it, the bruise turned into a break. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I advise, you know, I work with the MBPA. I'm actually furloughed now, but I work with the MBPA, and I, I talk to a, a lot of the young guys about that specific situation. Mm -hmm. Like, if you hurt, you need to let them know because, you know, you could risk your career in the NBA mm -hmm. by trying to play when you injured. And uh, that's what I did. And, uh, you know, it, it was some it was some regret there, you know, after after I retired, when I look back at my career and was like, you know, uh, I used to say all the time I only played when someone asked me, I was a little ashamed to say, like, I mm -hmm. only played three years in the NBA because my hey, goal was. Yeah. To be, yeah, well, I mean, that's what everyone says to me, too. And now, you know, I, I can that's that's a, a great accomplishment that right. I made. a lot right. of people Absolutely. wish they could do that. But my goal was to be, you know, an all-star, play 15 years, and I came up way short of that. So that's why I was a little bit embarrassed by it. But, uh, you know, now that I look back and see where I came from, even mm -hmm. to get to that point uh, was, uh, you know, a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice, and it was a huge accomplishment for me and for my family. So uh, I I'm very proud of to. to now, yeah, I played in the NBA. Yeah, I played for three exactly. years without hesitation. A lot, have, a lot of people don't have those wishes, hopes, and it, and it never happens. So it's not only I played in the NBA, you know, and then now even something you did feel embarrassed about, then you're now giving knowledge out there to our youth because I have a son that's injured right now and it's like he's still playing, you know, like. Are you not going to stop? Are you not going to heal? And that's only going to affect you in the future. So I'm glad you said that because I have to make sure he watches this clip because that means a lot. So that's definitely, you know, knowledge that you're giving back. Wow. 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 Yeah, I got a kid now that I'm training and he, you know, he tweaked his uh, hamstring and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he's one of the toughest kids I got. He never wants to admit that he's hurt and wants to keep pushing. And, mm -hmm. you know, I shared that same story with him and he you know he finally told us you know his coach for his school is like, like you know i'm hurt and he it, that was a big deal for him for him to uh, have enough uh guts to tell his coach that he was injured and that's right. that should be not that should never ever be something that you're ashamed of you know if you if you hurt you're hurt you know you got to sit down and rest and come back when you're ready if not you risk yeah. you know making it worse Absolutely. And um, Tamar, you actually have a um, a camp, right? You you deal with the youth, you train them. Tell us, well, before you get into that, we have a clip that I would like everyone to watch about your, um, you know, your youth, your training camp and everything. What is it actually called? It's, it's my name, Tamar Slay Basketball. Oh, that's your shirt. Yeah. Okay, Tamar Slay yeah, Basketball. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, so yeah. let's watch a clip of that. Okay, all right. Tomorrow Slay Basketball is not just a name. It's a style of play. Yo, call to the floor and they handle that ball. Call to the handle. Don't lose it. Call to the floor. Don't lose it. Good job, man. Good. Good work. Not bad. Not bad for April. I have a lot of experience. Uh, my staff has a lot of experience. I played professionally for 12 years, three years in the NBA. 
uh, behind my brother, Trey Jason Guy. Slay, who's working with us, who's been a uh, college basketball coach for the last seven years. My other partner is uh, Cameron Law. He's been doing it 12 years. The guy's fantastic. I mean, he, he has drills for days. I mean, he really knows how to relate with the kid. When you step in between these lines, let this be your escape. You know, the hour, two hours that you're playing in the gym. This escape from, from reality. Stay low. Stay low. Crossover. Go, Bryce. Good crossover. Good. Oh. Good, good. Now let me get it. Look, hold it tight. Look. Good. This. Or would you have about this distance? You have more power, right? Can't stay in that position. The kids buy in. I guarantee, you know, they're going to become better people and better basketball players. Do that every time. Do that every time. Attack at them. Go at them. You got to rely on your fundamentals. You got to rely on your fundamentals and have good habits. When you come here, you're going to get the correct training. We're not going to jump the gun. We're not trying to impress anybody. We know, especially if you're young kids, That's we know it. we have a long That's time it. with you to develop you into the player you need to be. So that's what we do here. We, we start from ground level and we build up. Handle it. Handle it. This, like I said, we got a long time together, guys. So we're not trying to kill you. I'm definitely not trying to scare you all away. I have an eye that most trainers don't have. And I, I don't believe in teaching a kid how to dribble with three balls and spin it on their head if they can't shoot a layup properly. Or if, you know, they still have mechanic problems with their with their footwork. So in tomorrow's sleep basketball, we're teaching the, the game step by step. But you gotta have thick skin because I'm preparing you for what it's like at the next level. Because these college coaches, you know, some of them pretty brutal. It's bigger than basketball. You gotta bend your knees. You gotta bend your knees. We have a, a passion that, you know, I believe is, is second to none. Wow, now that's amazing. It looks like you have a variety of ages. What's the youngest that you actually train? Uh, man, five, five years old, probably youngest, five. yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now, I know this is a crazy question, but not really, because I know the five-year-olds, you know, they're kind of learning themselves, but then you have the old ones that think they know themselves. So who would you say is kind of the hardest to actually train? The hardest to train is the uh, players that are probably middle school age that play rec basketball their whole life. Uh, oh, wow. They're, okay. They're probably, yeah, that. yeah, they're probably the hardest because they, you know, rec basketball, uh, usually the coaches are volunteer dads mm -hmm. that maybe play some middle school basketball or maybe just, you know, a YouTube guy that just watch a video and then come in and try to explain that. And uh, they really don't understand the intricacies of basketball. And, uh, you know, once you get to true competitive basketball, true competitive coaching and training, uh, the kids, they have so many bad habits. It takes years to break. And sometimes you can't break them because the kid will break before, uh, you know, that we're able to get them to where, you know, they, they can play competitively at a high level. So have you ever had to do anything that was hard for you? Meaning like, you know, this isn't for you type conversation with any children or everyone's kind of accepted regardless of the fact? Oh, yeah. No, never that. We always, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, whatever comes to me, I can fix, you know, okay. uh, sort of like a doctor, no matter what, what, what the wound may be, you know, a doctor feel like they can save the day. And, uh, you know, I had, you know, some of my staff say, you know, what are you doing? What are you thinking? I had kids come to me, you know, with two left feet, can't walk and chew gum at the same time. But, you know, after me, you know, believing in them, first of all, and then, you know, working with them with the simple fundamentals, you know, year, two years later now, uh, they're, they're making their, their middle school team, you know, then they're, then they're, they're starring, you know, on their high school team by that time. So, 
Uh, it's just about believing in the kid, but the kid has to want it, you know, uh, because a lot of times they think just because, okay, tomorrow Slade played in the NBA, I hold a magic wand and I can just fix you in two weeks. Right. No, you know, it's a process. It takes a long time and it takes a lot of trust from, from the athlete. It takes a lot of trust from the family to uh, stick through those games where you like, oh, my God, what is <laughs> doing, right. you know? But, you know, you got to see what the end goal is. Absolutely. What inspired you to actually you um, start up, up on the day? I'm sorry. Um, what actually um, started you to, or motivated you, or inspired you to start up a training camp for the youth? Uh, I'm sorry, it's a little choppy. Uh, I don't know if it's my internet or what. It is try a little to, try choppy. To I think it's clear. Can you up hear now. me a little bit now? Oh. Ah. Uh oh. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, I can. Okay. Um, what inspired you or motivated you to actually start a youth uh, training camp? We're not having let me uh, let me take a walk here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe back now. Can you hear me now? Right. Yeah, it's better now. I changed rooms up. Let's see if that uh, see if that works. Yeah, I can hear you good now. Thanks. Okay. I just I changed rooms. So, what was the question? Um, what inspired you or motivated you to start a youth training camp? Uh, the biggest inspiration for me was you know where I come from. You know, I had a high school coach that really. Uh, uh, got me on the right track. And uh, along the way, I've had a lot of great coaches to teach me, you know, uh, the game of basketball, but also life skills. Uh, you know, my story was this, you know, I come from a single mom, uh, didn't graduate. This, she didn't graduate high school. My dad had some troubles. Uh, we were homeless at one point. So we come from very humble beginnings and basketball was uh, my way out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so every kid that I train, you know, I look at that kid as, as if it's me. And uh, I know how powerful and impactful basketball was for me. So every kid that I approach, uh, I, I coach with that, that that's, if, if that's the little tomorrow Slay right there. So, uh, you know, I know it changed my life and uh, I know it can change others' life. So that's, that's the main reason why I got into it. And I just love – I love basketball. I can't play it anymore because I'm too old. So I get, you know, <laughs> still get my same thrill and seeing the kid develop. Right. That's awesome. If you don't mind me asking, how tall are you? I'm 6'8". Six, 6'8". Eight. Six, eight. Oh, my gosh. I know yeah. the kids be like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, they do. How tall? Like, when did you hit that growth spurt? When did you know that, okay, like, I'm way up here? Like, were you in high school? Well, it was crazy. When I was, so I finished school my ninth grade year, I was 5'9". So okay. when, that was in June. And when I started school back my 10th grade year, I was 6'4". So in, like, three months, I grew like crazy. And uh, then from sophomore to junior, I grew from 6'4 to 6'7". And then when I got in college, I grew another inch and a half. So... Wow! You know, it's like you know, I would wake up in the morning and be taller. That's how fast I was. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's like whoa! I know the kids was like, "What in the world at school? Is this the same person?" Yeah, that, that's, that, yeah, <laughs> well, I, <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us? I told you I didn't want to keep you too long because I appreciate you just you know taking the time out to come on and talk to me and, and motivate others and share your story. If there's anything else, do you think there's something else that you would want to share with the viewers? Yeah, just for all the athletes out there, you know, you have to, you know, especially if you got high goals of playing college basketball. Uh, most athletes can, you know, uh, you know, do a step back. Most athletes can do the new year old step. Most athletes can score 15, 20 points games in the tournament. But uh, what else is going to separate you? You know, and that that has mm -hmm. to be 
you know, doing the little things, you know, doing things that uh, no one else would do, you know, uh, hustling on defense, having a great attitude, being coachable, uh, you know, dominating every drill you do. Those are the little things that's going to separate you from you know, the other athletes. So uh, that will be my final message there. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that. I do want to ask one more question. And again, you, you do not have to answer if you don't feel comfortable. In the flyer, I noticed, uh, you know, a picture of you and, and Kobe Bryant. So if you don't mind me asking, like, what were the moments, you know, in that picture? What, what were you feeling to see that image of you and Kobe? You know, and again, if you don't want to answer, I just kind of want to know. I want to know if your, your students at the camp ever asked you anything about that, or do you share that with him, that you had the honor of actually playing with Kobe Bryant? Yeah, I mean, I think that's that. I mean, that pit, that 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 photo is, you know, iconic, and you know, in, in my eyes, uh, just sort of simple fact. Of course, now Kobe's no longer with us, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, when I look back and and see where I came from, to see that I had an opportunity to play against, mm -hmm. you know, not only Kobe, you know, I got a chance to play against Michael Jordan and LeBron. Oh, wow. So those are the three greatest players ever to live. I missed the third one. Who was the third one? Uh, LeBron. Michael. Oh, okay. I got to play against all those guys. And it was just, you know, LeBron was young. So I was like, man, that's a young fella, you know, when I played against him. But, you know, the the, the feeling that I had when I when I had to guard Kobe Bryant was just like, uh, oh, my God. And, you know, I, I've been watching this guy the last five, six years on TV just dominate guys. So it's just like, you know, just don't get embarrassed because it was a Christmas game. I know everybody was watching. I was like, just don't let him. Of embarrass you with the move, so uh, you know that was kind of the mindset of at that time. The same with Michael Jordan. It was just like you know, I was like I was playing against a god or something when I wow. Him, so it was it was just an unreal feeling that I had. And, and I'm gonna just fuss a little bit and bring up the past, which I always tell the viewers: never dwell on the past because you cannot change it. But for you to say only all those times and you had these amazing opportunities. Yeah. Oh, oh, I know. Well, I'm better. You know what I'm saying? I say I've been I've been doing my work and I, I try not to say only three years anymore because I am proud that I did play in the NBA for three years now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, is there anything you want to ask me before we end this segment? Um, I appreciate it so much. This was awesome. Uh, no, I th thank you. Yeah, you know, I I'm I'm glad I'm able to, to get on. I've, I had a great time and you know, we are we are doing we're, we're trying to get in our own space here uh, and we, we are doing a fundraiser uh, and uh, it's on my it's, it's on my social media It's on my social media uh, right now. So uh, it's five dollars for a okay. ticket. You know, you got a chance to win get some cool Yeti coolers, Yeti cups. Everybody loves those. So right. I think the Yeti cooler is worth about four hundred dollars or so. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, it's pretty cool. So you got a chance to win. That. So uh, okay. just going to all my social media links and uh, you can see the information on there. Okay. And your social media links, is it just the Tamar Slay or is it something else uh, in there? Yeah, we got, we got uh, my, my Instagram is uh, Slay Training. And then just for Facebook, it's just my name, just Tamar Slay. Okay, okay. And then I actually shared it as well. So y'all can definitely check my um, Facebook page out. Make sure y'all, um, you know, support. Um, get those tickets. You might win that cooler because I know I'm going to get me a few, you know, take a chance and win it so we can have it for well, our summer vacation or whenever I may need it. But again, I thank everyone for tuning in to Marsley. I thank you so much for taking the time out on your Sunday, you know, to talk with us, to motivate us, to inspire us. And again, thank you so much. And as we always say on Let's Sip and Talk with Freema, peace and love. Peace. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, thank uh, you.